I am sorry. I just realized that I was broadcasting without any audio. Ah, uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I forgot to check all my controls. Duh. Um, no wormhole. I was actually muted. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. How you doing, wormhole? Um, yeah, no, I. Duh, I forgot to hit the button for the mic. <laughs> Oops. Um, like I was saying, um, the as I'm sure you've already noticed, I put up the parental advisory explicit content sign. Not because there is going to be um, explicit content, but because there very well may be some explicit content coming out of my mouth today. Um, I am extremely, extremely disappointed in all of the crap and garbage that I have been seeing coming out of some people's mouths. <clears throat> Out there on the um, on the vape verse, <clears throat> um, as I was saying to a couple of people just not too long ago, um, I was at work that day, and when the that that lovely Alphabet Soup agency decided to drop its little bombshell on Cinco de Mayo while everybody else and his brother was out there trying to figure out what kind of party they were going to be going to that night. Um, my phone started lighting up on me at about 9.30ish, give or take a little bit, and I thought, I was like, you know, what the heck is going on here? You know, my, my hip is getting more vibration than a personal pleasure device and um, well I, I couldn't turn around I couldn't check it while I was on the job so you know I just I had to turn around and wait until I got home when I got home and I looked on the web and it was oh my freaking God Unfortunately, the FDA decided to drop draconian measures as opposed to enlightened measures that um, any supposedly science-based organization, which the Food and Drug Administration is supposed to be, um, would normally take. Um, yeah. Suffice it to say, I'm not a very happy camper right now. Uh, there's been a lot of garbage, to be very polite about it, floating around on various Facebook, Twitter, etc., etc., ad nauseum uh, pages. About what's really go what's going on, what's happening. All of the chicken littles have decided that they're going to turn around and come out of their little coops, running around without their heads on, screaming at the top of their lungs. The you the 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 the, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. Ladies and gentlemen, the sky is not falling. And just because the FDA put out its deeming regulations, that does not mean that it is the end of vaping. This kind of crap has been expected by anybody with half a brain and with ears to hear the utterances of those people who are in the know and who have been out there busting their fucking hump trying to turn around and trying to keep vaping from going the way of the dodo or the passenger pigeon. In other words, extinct. It 
it is really, you know, I, 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 look, I'm 57, 58 years old, okay? I have seen a lot of bullshit in my time. I have seen a lot of crap go down in my time. I am not a virgin when it comes to expecting the government of this country to be doing and saying everything that is the absolute exact truth. I, I'm not stupid enough to believe that. However, what the FDA has done with these regulations is the most asinine freaking thing that they could possibly have ever done. The only thing that they have done is that they have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt to anyone with half a fucking brain that they are bought and paid for by the very entities they are supposedly regulating. If this organization, this administration were doing what it was supposed to be doing, and that is looking out for the health, the welfare of the people of the United States and its dependencies to ensure that good, wholesome, therapeutic medicines are to be dispensed to the citizens of the United States and its dependencies to ensure that snake oil is not put out there as being the cure for everything from a ingrown hair on your nose to the boil on your ass then they would not have put out these regulations. The only thing that they have proven is that the entire administration, the Food and Drug Administration, is corrupt, bought, paid for, and delivered by the ver by the money generated by the very entities that they are supposedly regulating and that the science the only science that they look at is pseudoscience that pseudoscience being specifically whatever happens to pop out of the mouths and the fetid brains of those zealots out there who believe that nicotine in the slightest, tiniest microgram strength is more powerful a poison than shoving a pound of strychnine or sodium cyanide or even potassium cyanide down someone's throat. Okay? They refuse to recognize that the devil is in the dose. Yes. Nicotine, like any other chemical out there, even oxygen, even water, can be a poison depending upon the dosage. 
Nicotine is not the addictive part of a traditional combustible cigarette. Nicotine is mildly addictive, just like caffeine is, just like water can be. However, the real damage when it comes to addiction comes from that mix of chemicals that is in the tobacco and is produced by the tobacco when it is burned. MAOI inhibitors, etc., etc., ad nauseum, that being the most um, prevalent that's there. Uh, excuse me, not MAOI inhibitors, MAO and MAOI. Um, those drugs that are in there are what actually does the damage for the addiction. The nicotine is just on the along for, really just along for the ride. It is mildly addictive. <clears throat> As anyone who has smoked for any any longer than maybe a week will more than happily attest to, but it is no more addictive than the caffeine that you get in your coffee, your tea, or even your hot chocolate, for that matter. <clears throat> there are thousands and thousands of people out there who have been very capably handling their addiction and have been straightening out their lives and improving their lives through the use of these these things personal vaporizers aka e-cigarettes there are people out there who use these things with zero nicotine in them. But from what I've been able to gather, and I have not had a chance to read all the way through it, but from what I understand from some of the people who have been reading through it, even those people who vape zero, zip, nada, zilch, nicotine, <clears throat> levels in their juice are going to be lumped in with those who vape 3, 6, 12, 15, 18, 24 milligrams of nicotine and those people who are standing outside in the smoking lounge or in the smoking area sucking on their Marlboros, their Cools, their Benson and Hedges, etc., etc., ad nauseum, not to forget Newports, you know because they're out there too, and all those other brands of traditional combustible cigarettes, even though they have zero nicotine. Why? To protect the children, to keep them from looking at this as a normalization of smoking. Oh, my God. Bull fucking shit. Excuse my language, folks. Bull fucking shit. The FDA brings in billions of dollars to the federal government by charging its 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 fees for every one of those PMD uh, PM pre market things that everybody is going to have to be filing for each and every e-juice that they have on the market, for each and every tank, and each and every coil, each and every battery, each and every inch of cotton that they, ha that they sell that goes into these things. Okay? That's billions of dollars that our greedy government is not going to pass up. Oh my God, we're going to pass up billions of dollars 
from these fees because these people want to get healthy? No. Are we going to pass up all of the money, the billions and billions of dollars that we can make on sin taxes? Taxing the living crap out of those poor, deluded vapors who think that they're going to be able to get themselves healthy and get away from paying the government for breathing? No. If we were to leave these things alone, our friends in big tobacco who pay billions and billions of dollars into the tobacco master settlement that helps to fund our governments, both the federal and almost all of the state governments, who would wind up pretty damn much going freaking broke if people were to suddenly start getting healthier by vaping instead of smoking. Uh, we will turn around and we are not going to pass up the billions and billions of dollars put brought in by our friends in the pharmaceutical industry who put out all of these wonderful new drugs that they have to pay billions and billions in 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 fees to try and get put through and who get who kick back probably under the table to every to just about every damn administration out there in the form of hmm, re-election campaign funds yeah, like the former FDA administrator who is now under investigation and under indictment by the federal government under the RICO statutes for uh, not telling people about all the wonderful side effects about these particular drugs. I'll bet if they start turning over some more of those slime-covered rocks, they'll find out that the, that other companies out there have been doing the same damn thing for just about everybody out there. Oh, I'm not, I, I, I can't, I, the corruption, the corruption of the federal government, of the individual state governments, out there that has been hidden from you and me and every other citizen in this country for years is suddenly starting to come to light. Why? Because of these. Excuse me a minute. I promised myself I would not I would not go off the way I want to go off. I promised myself that I would turn around and I would be a professional person that I would not turn around and I would not be the rabble rouser on the street waving the red banner of revolution and crying down with the government off with their heads I served in the military I did not serve very long I still took the oath, and even though I have the papers showing that I was discharged from the government, from the army, I still consider that oath that I took to defend, support, and defend the Constitution of the United States very seriously. These bastards, 
these corrupt, money-grubbing, little sons of bitches need to be turned out. There are very, very few people out there in this government, in these governments, that have not been drinking from the fetid trough. Unfortunately, government service has become a revolving door. You come in, serve an administration, when that administration changes, you go back through the revolving door, go outside, get into the get into the omnibus and get off at one of the one of the agencies. No, I am not a Democrat. I am a Republican. Uh, 627. I am not a Democrat, but I am not one of those. I am, I am a Republican, but I am not one of the ultra right wing of the Republican Party that uh, flies the Tea Party flags and stuff like that. I am actually a very liberal Republican. I am too. I have been described as being too liberal for the Republican Party and too conservative for the Democratic Party. So, um, yes, the head of the FDA was appointed by Obama. Yes. And so was this lady who is under indictment. She also was appointed by the Obama administration. And if you think for one minute that this is limited strictly to the Obama administration, you're sadly mistaken. Unfortunately, this goes for both the Republican Party administrations as well as Democratic Party administrations. This is something that is endemic, unfortunately, with the system, and everybody turns their eyes and puts their blinders on and goes, I don't see nothing. Okay? This is bullshit. Yes. Yes. You're absolutely correct, 627. That is the reason why we need to get people from outside the government beltway. All those people who have been going through that revolving door of government, from government to... Uh, to um, I can't even think right now. To all of those people who, lo excuse me, thank you, lobbyists go into lobbying because they have all their friends and everything else. Yes, the private sector, the lobbying private sector who go out there and because they were in government, they have all of these friends that are still in government because they happen to be the right party. Um, at the time, or they're, they're civil servants, quote, close quote, and they can't be thrown out. Uh, they have these friends in there, so they make use of their friendships. And they go out there and they make billions and billions of dollars collectively every year, spreading around the corrupt filth. O eight three. Guest 083, I will say this straight right now. I don't believe that any of the candidates, either the ones that dropped out or the ones that are still in, that are vying for the presidency of this country this year, are worth two drams of gunpowder to blow them to Hades. Okay? They all have their issues. Uh, I don't particularly like Trump. I certainly don't like Hillary. And I, I'm, I'm on the fence about uh, Sanders. Okay? Um, I, I, I really don't think that any of them are worth a vote. But I'm not going to get into that kind of politics. 
I'm not going to get into that kind of politics because that is a can of worms that we don't need to really open at this time. The can of worms that we're dealing with right now is the FDA. For those of you out there who have not seen it, okay, I'm going to put up a URL right now that when you type that into your browser, it will take you directly to the page where you can download the actual 499 page document that the FDA graced us with on the 5th. Like I said, I have not had a chance to read through it. I have not been feeling masochistic enough to actually read through it. And besides, I am not a lawyer. So some of the stuff in there that is in there would be lost on me. Some of the finer points of detail. There was a guidance that was put out by the Vaping Technology Association, the VTA. I just put up the URL for that here as well. Yes. Same FDA that put out the AZT for AIDS patients. Yes. Unfortunately, it is still the same group. These, uh, the guidance that was I just put up is a preliminary guidance paper. It's about two and a half pages long. It's not very long. It's preliminary from their lawyers as to what they've seen in there so far. Ooh, excuse me. Um, it is subject to change after they get through reading through the whole damn thing. Um, but at least it's something that we have some ideas to what we're looking at here for the time being. Um, vaping is not dead. There are, new, there are still things that can be done, and I am sure that are being done at this very minute as I speak, somewhere in this country. One of the major things that needs to be done, and I understand there are some people out there who are already taking these steps, is to file a suit in federal court against the Food and Drug Administration and to achieve a, an injunction against them to stay the implementation of these regulations because in August 90 day or August 5th or 6th or something like that 90 days from the 5th get out your calendars and start counting in 90 days these regulations become set in titanium they will have been carved by that ruby laser that you will not be able to eradicate these things in any way, shape, or form if they go into final, into the final form. In the next 90 days, the lawyers need to be getting down to the federal courthouses and they need... No. It is not just 18 years and under. The federal food and drug, I'll get to that in a second, uh, 083. Um, they need to get down to the federal courthouses and start filing for injunctions against this. Also, you ladies and gentlemen out there, both the ones who have not and the ones that who have been running around like chicken little without their heads screaming the sky is falling you need to get your butts in gear start making phone calls emails getting on to the case of each and every one of your congressional representatives and senators 
whether or not they want to hear from you or not. To get onto their phone lines, find out their telephone numbers, get their email addresses, and start bugging the living freaking hell out of them to start supporting not only the coal amendment, not the coal bill, the coal amendment. The coal amendment, which I'm going to be putting up and URL to right now, is an amendment to one of the must pass bills that will, for all intents and purposes, change the grandfather date. It's like the mini call, like mini HR 2058. This is a stopgap measure. It will change that portion of the bill of the, of the um, the law that gives FDA authority, the Tobacco Act that gives the FDA authority of No, the FDA has not already won. No. The FDA has not already won 627. They're, the only way the FDA and their minions will win is if we lay down and let the bus roll over us. We still have things that we can do. There is still lawsuits that can be done. The coal amendment, which has got quite a bit of legs and is has been included in this budget uh, legislation, it can still be removed by some of those some of our enemies. We need to get people in Congress to support this amendment. This is a stopgap measure because the next time the next appropriations bill comes up, this could be blackened out and with the little exacto knife and taken out of the law. And it could be reverted back to the old stuff. The HR 2058 is what needs to be put through. And right now it has been languishing in committee for over a year. That is the law that ne that is the bill that needs to get signed into law. That is the bill that needs to get pushed through Congress and put onto the president's desk for signature and it needs to get done. The coal amendment needs to get passed and you need to get we need to get people to support that. So that way it doesn't get oh, we don't need this stripped out in committee. If they find out that, oh, there's just too much stuff in here. We need to simplify this. Oh, this thing on E6? No, we don't need that. We'll strip that right out. Even though it's been included into the bill, it can still get removed. Um, what do you mean, come on, you already laid down? I am not laid down. I am not, I have not laid down. The bus is not rolling over this body. They will have to roll over me with the tank treads. And even then, I go down fighting. Okay? I will not submit to this. I may only have my voice and my vote, but I will never submit to the tyranny that these governmental agencies, the usurpation of, that these governmental agencies are trying to do of the Constitution. This is for all intents and purposes, in reality, a usurpation of the Constitution. Here they have 
are they're claiming that a product that is more healthy than the product it is trying to replace and to eradicate is just as bad as that product when the science shows otherwise you ladies and gentlemen out there you need to get in touch with your congress critters you need to get onto them like white on rice we need to have these people pass these laws to get vaping out from under the threat of the FDA. What really needs to be done, the actual thing that really needs to be done is that con some congressman or group of congressmen, congresspersons, excuse me, need to get together and write a bill that takes electronic cigarettes, personal vaporizers for ends, electronic nicotine delivery systems out from under the control of the Food and Drug Administration completely. Whether or not they have con they contain nicotine, they need to be removed completely from the authority of the FDA. They need to be put up as their own classification. These things are not tobacco. Even though they have nicotine in them, they're still not tobacco. There's no burning. There's no combustion it does not have all of the other chemical mixes that the traditional cigarettes have <clears throat> these things are not tobacco products they need their own classification they need their own classification we need to get these stop cap, stop gap, excuse me, not stop cap, stop gap measures done. We need to have organizations, all the organizations out there that vapors belong to, not just vaping organizations themselves. But other organizations that vapors belong to need to get behind this. They need to turn around and lend their support for this. Because these products, these things, okay, have saved lives. They continue to save lives today. I smoked for over 45 years. I tried the gums. I tried the patches. I sure as hell was not going to be using the pills. Not after what I've heard for, uh, and, and heard from people who have taken them. Not just on the internet, but in person. When I saw the list of side effects that they have, I was like, uh, no. I made up my mind that I was going to be a smoker until the day they di I died. And I would still probably die with a cigarette in my hand. Okay? One of my greatest fears was have, winding up getting into a car accident or something else. And I wind up going into a hospital. I wouldn't be able to smoke. And I'd wind up having to turn around and bundle all my IVs on. And then push myself outside so I could have myself a smoke while in, with, 
with the oxygen tubes and having the nurses come running screaming after me that no you can't do that you're gonna rip open whatever is ripped open it doesn't need to be ripped open That is my, that was my fear. I'm sorry, every time I look over here at the chat, um, it, 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 I look and see what's there and it, it blows what I've wanted to say here in my head out today. We need to get these devices out from under the FDA. We need to have them brought back into the consumer spectrum, okay? If they want to regulate, I am not at all against regulations to keep nicotine juices out of the hands of kids. Not at all. I believe nicotine-containing juices or e-juices, even at zero milligrams, needs to be done in a clean environment, not mixed up in a roach infested sink in someone's um, in someone's apartment and then put out to the market for everybody to vape. If you want to do that for yourself, well that's your that's what you want to do, then so be it. That's what you do. But you don't sell that kind of stuff to everybody else that's out there. Okay, so clean uh, clean room environments doesn't have to be the kind of clean room environments that they use for making pharmaceutical grade uh, stuff doesn't have to be that it just has to be relatively clean and relatively infectious material free environment um, that I'm for I am totally for that but to turn around and take a piece of equipment like this and say that this here is a tobacco product does this look like it grew out of the soil of Kentucky Tennessee or any other place or Connecticut or any other place that that any other state that turns around and grows tobacco does this look like a plant to you sure as hell don't look like a plant to me does that look like a plant I've never seen a plant that turns around and produces stainless steel or glass no these people have gone too far. What we need to do right now is we need to step back, take a deep breath, and let the lawyers out there who work for the various organizations do their thing. They need to go out there and they need to read through this stuff and they need to determine by mashing their heads together what the best course of action out of the many courses of action that are out there available to us to do. In the meantime, instead of sitting there and wringing your hands and going, oh my God, oh my God, get on to your Congress critters. Call them, email them, show up on their door, bring a bagel, bring coffee, tell them, look, I need to talk to you. You get 30 or 40 of your fellow vapors there all showing up with bagels and coffee. They're going to listen. They have to listen. They're your, they are your representative. You are their constituency. They have to fucking listen. And if they don't listen, well, there's a little thing called unemployment that when the next election comes up, which just so happens to be in November, they may wind up having to partake in. Just saying. If they don't listen to you, vote their asses the hell out. If we get enough fucking people out there voting these sons of bitches out, out of fucking government that don't listen, then maybe we'll get some people in who do listen. Just saying.
No. 627. We do not have any control over appointees, but we do have control over the ones who make the appointments. The ones who make the appointments are elected officials. And we have the power of sending them to the unemployment line. Okay? Folks, I'm seeing stuff here in chat. I see a lot of people here who are just as pissed off as me. I see a lot of I see people who are don't know what to do and don't know how to do it and are really really angry. Turn your anger Turn your anger into constructiveness. Get rid of the corrupt officials that are out there by getting rid of those politicians who don't listen to us, who don't listen to their constituencies. Make them know what your wishes are. Tell them to support the coal amendment tell them to get out there to support HR 2058 get on to them get to know them and find out exactly where they stand if they don't stand with us then they're against us okay pure plain and simple listen to what's going on with VTA with Safada with CASA, vaping militia, not blowing smoke. Listen to what comes out from these people in the next month or so. Because they will be working their asses off to turn around and try and help save us. If we don't help them, then we don't deserve to turn around and be called vapors. Seriously. You're pissed off, you're mad, you're angry about this crap, turn it into constructiveness. Support the organizations that are on the front lines that are trying to help us and trying to save us. Support them in any and every way possible. All the other stuff that's going on is smoke and mirrors. Real smoke, not vapor, smoke. There's too much smoke and mirrors in government. I know I have been ranting and raving here for the last almost an hour now. But I needed to say some of this stuff. Okay? And I'm probably, when I put this up on YouTube, will probably lose a lot of credibility with a lot of people, but I felt that it needed to be said. We, you, me, anyone who vapes needs to chill out, listen to what's going on, coming from the organizations who have boots on the ground, and contacts with the people that matter when it comes to votes in Congress because Congress is the only one now that can literally save vaping or finally put a nail in its coffin because as the FDA said they're a regulatory agency they do not have the authority to change the deeming date 
uh, the, the grandfather day. What we need to do is we need to get Congress, the people who originally wrote the law that gave the FDA its authority to change the deeming date and grandfather in all of the stuff that has been happening up until this point. By rights, we need to get Congress, that same body, to actually write a law that will take vaping devices, personal vaporizers, e-cigarettes, whatever the hell you want to call these things, electronic nicotine delivery systems, out of the hands of the FDA. Once and for all. These things are consumer devices. These should be under the control of product of the um, product safety commissions, not the Food and Drug Administration. This is not a drug. This is not a drug. Okay? This tank is not a drug. It is a device. You can't inject it into your arm. It's not a drug. And even if you could get it into your arm, it'd be very painful because it put a big freaking hole in your arm. And it, when it gets in there, it's not going to help you. It's only going to turn around and hurt you because it's put that big hole in your arm. This is not this is not a drug. This is not a drug. These batteries are not drugs. Okay? They're not. They're devices. They need to be taken out of the hands of the Food and Drug Administration. Because these people are bought and freaking paid for by the enemies of vaping. We need to turn around and get our Congress critters behind us and to do the to to pass the amendment, pass the coal bill, and then to finally and and and, and totally forever remove these things from the reach of the FDA. Remember, all this stuff that they're talking about, about trying to keep this, these products from renormalizing cigarette smoking with kids is bullshit. Total horse pucky. Total bullshit. No one is going to give up a strawberry creme brulee tasting vape for something that turns around and tastes like it came out of a freaking sewer. Nobody. This is not going to lead kids back to cigarettes. It is not. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have ranted and raved on here for an hour about this. The chat here has blown up like crazy about a lot of other stuff that is not on point. There's a lot of stuff in there that is on point. And yes, 083, the FDA is not at the FDA is not just in big tobacco's pocket okay it's in the pharmaceutical companies out there that produce the um, the nicotine cessation products like Chantix and the patches and the gums and the lozenges and all those companies there is billions of dollars out there that is at stake, that these things threaten billions. No, Chantex is not a joke. It is shit, but it is not a joke. 
It's a billion dollar product that lines the pockets of the pharmaceutical company that makes it and the Food and Drug Administration people who supposedly make sure that it is proper. When you're talking about the kind of money that that pro one single product brings in in a year, that's not a joke. That's serious money. That's real money. That's real money that people will fight and scratch and kill to protect. Yes, and I mean that literally. So, because people have wasted other people for a lot less. They'll waste somebody for a buck. They'll waste them for that kind of money. So, I'm not saying that anybody has or would do something like that, but one never knows. Take a deep breath. Monday, get on to your representatives, congressional and senatorial. Keep on them. Tell them. Support the Cole Amendment. Support H.R. 2058. Let's get ourselves some breathing room. Then we can work on getting ourselves out from under the thumb of these Nazis. And with that, I'm going to leave here today. And let you go back to your celebrations. To all the mothers out there and the mothers to be and those who want to be mothers, I wish you a happy Mother's Day. I wish you a bright, sunny, joy-filled day. To all of you out there who are not mothers, but who have spent a significant time in the lives of your children or other people's children that you have influence over, I wish you a bright and joyous day. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. Take care. Bye for now. And God bless.